Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of F123 Driver Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We return to China for the first time in a few seasons here in this career mode, bringing in a bunch of upgrades as well into this weekend that you can see rolling in right here. Now there's a lot of upgrades coming in, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot in terms of performance. You can see it doesn't really move us much further ahead. Uh, coming into this weekend, of course, we were fresh off of that spin in Spain after looking at a potential podium it was a bit unfortunate there of course uh, to have that kind of develop and it was all my own doing and we as well uh, so Alex Albon uh, sweep the first three Grand Prix of the season can he come into the Chinese Grand Prix and go four for four or can at least McLaren go four for four could Aiden Jackson pick up his first win of his Formula One career here today we'll have to wait and see rain falling uh, here in practice on Friday afternoon and it's going to be dry in qualifying uh, as well as the Grand Prix. We have yet to see rain in the Grand Prix uh, at all this season here now. Uh, so we'll wait and see how that's going to affect us this, uh, in these coming episodes. In the next episode, if you missed the off-season video, we of course are running a custom calendar. So we are going to Zanfort in the next episode. Just important to uh, note that. As you can see myself struggling a little bit there. Uh, for a grip here in practice, this is of course a dry uh, setup. So it's going to drive like absolute garbage in the rain and it certainly was. So it was really just uh, trying to get a feel for the track. It's been a while of course uh, since I've done any laps here. So I was pretty happy overall with how practice went. We shattered the times for the race strategy so that was not uh, an issue whatsoever. Now as you can see the times actually uh, look like it dried up by the end of practice so you can see everybody's going to be ahead of us here. Uh, we're down at the bottom of the grid. The only one there with uh, a wet tire uh, on for our fastest time. We rolled through into Saturday here for the Chinese Grand Prix qualifying now. Uh, as we know the one lap pace and just short run pace in general with this Red Bull Ford has not been where it needs to be. The pace in this car lives in the long run. We're about I would say the third best team on the short run um, and on the long run I think we have the best car on the grid uh, when it comes to the late in the race but the problem is we lose so much time on the short run that we don't have enough time to make it up so it's really interesting Q1 uh, we barely sneak through into Q2 actually I was P15 in Q1 it wasn't pretty and I barely make it as well Zhou Guan Yu unfortunately out in his home Grand Prix in Q1 uh, while Liam Lawson, Jake Hughes, Callie Mayer and Devin Butler set to join them all out in the first round of qualifying uh, Iwasa and Drogovic there the rookie just in front of myself we roll through into Q2 and these are my very first laps on dry compound tires this weekend so I wasn't surprised my first lap in Q1 was not great uh, I was quickly finding you know more pace more comfortability uh, and just you know everything as a positive here we come to the line this time around and we already have made improvements compared to Q1 but obviously not enough P12 is not going to get you in so we have to make a second and final lap here now on the same set of tires we just kept going around the track and we would find the time uh, that we were looking for here. Now, three tenths of a second gain so far, about halfway through the lap or so. And as we came towards the end of the lap, we're going to gain about four tenths, about half a second now uh, of time. We lose a little bit of it on the exit of the corner. Uh, but through the final turn, there was a half second gain. This will put us in a Q3 as long as nothing goes crazy wrong, which it doesn't. So we will make it into Q3 quite comfortably there. Uh, P8, P9 for myself and Verstappen, Gasly, Iwasa, uh, Drogovic, as well as Esteban Ocon and tail poor chair all out in Q2. The Aston Martins are looking pretty good today. They have brought an upgrade this weekend uh, as they try to close in on the fight for the, you know, front of the pack of cars basically now. And we'll see what they can do in the race though because they really fall off as the run goes on, kind of like how our car comes on as the run goes on. So, first lap though in Q3, it could have been better. It wasn't, you know, perfect, but it was all right. It was going to give me a baseline of, you know, how much improvement we're going to need. So the first lap, Verstappen's the slowest, and then I'm going to follow through and go a little bit faster than him, but we were P9 and P10, so second lap running here in Q3, actually going purple sector 1, so pretty happy with that. This is on a brand new set of tires at this point because we saved some uh, in Q1 and Q2, only using one set for both sessions here. We're right behind a good reference car, the fastest, of course, car in the sport right now, the McLaren, that's Aiden Jackson. We gained about half a second of time, just like we did on the second lap in Q2, so that's going to bring us through the final turn. This is going to be a decent gain. Half a second will get us to P6. 
And now I decide, okay, we got enough battery, let's go for one more lap. We dropped to P7, Verstappen only manages ninth, not the qualifying he was looking for. I gain about two tenths of a second uh, on this final lap here through the final turn. A little bit rough through there, so I'm going to give up about half a tenth. We're going to cross the line with a gain, but still only P7 in qualifying. And you can see uh, signs and Leclerc down there with the two Red Bull uh, Fords. And then how about Aston Martin, fourth and fifth with Piastri and Sonoda Russell down in sixth place. As Albon takes pole over Jackson now as we get ready to head to the grid Sunday for the Chinese Grand Prix. The Chinese Grand Prix then is upon us once again. It's a race that saw Michael Schumacher claim his final Formula One victory in 2006, as well as Red Bull's first win with Sebastian Vettel in 2009. There's no doubt there's plenty more drama to come here in Shanghai. We start a lap here at Shanghai with the long, difficult right-handers of turns one and two, the first of 16 corners that make up this 3.3-mile circuit. The incredibly long back straight provides the best passing opportunity of the lap, with speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour before we head into the braking zone at turn 14. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Alex Albon leads us away from pole position and Aidan Jackson completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Norris, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Russell, Golden Boy, Sainz, Verstappen, Leclerc, Gasly, Iwasa, Drogovic, Ocon, Theo Porcher, Joe, Liam Lawson, Hughes, Mayer, and Devon Butler rounds off the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson, a lot of talented drivers out on the track today, but what will stand out for you? My focus is 100% on the front of the grid. Like you said, we're seeing a lot of strong competition across those positions, so it would be super interesting to see the fight for that front spot. Personally speaking, I'm hoping for plenty of overtakes. Ready to roll then here in China. What can we do? What can Zhou Guan Yu do here in his home Grand Prix? Hopefully some good things. Uh, as expected, it is going to be mediums too hard here for this 28 lap race. Plenty of time uh, for things to sort itself out here today. What can we do in the short run? It's all about that short run keeping us in it for the long run. Uh, of course, that comes in a little bit later on when we know our car is going to be strong. Let's find out. Let's head to the formation lap here for the Chinese Grand Prix. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. McLaren and Mercedes both split their drivers. One driver on softs, one driver on mediums. Which tire will be the fastest? We're going to find out. Okay, mate, do what you can on the short run here. We'll be rewarded as the race goes on. Yeah, 10 4. Uh, we have a strong card in the long run, so just uh, see what we can do. I mean, see what these upgrades can bring uh, for the short run today. You hear the radio? We're ready to roll, so what can we do uh, with some of these upgrades that, uh, I mean, we brought a lot of them, but it doesn't seem like they've really brought us forward like we would hope they would have, but we know there's still, you know, plenty of time to continue uh, upgrading this car. As the two Connor Sport uh, siblings of Cali Mayer and Devin Butler roll up to the back of the grid. We're ready to go racing. 28 laps here. Now, who's going to have a slow start? We know someone is. It always happens. Here we go. The Chinese Grand Prix is underway, and it looks like maybe P. Piastri is a bit slow as well as Lando Norris. We're side by side uh, with him as we head down towards turn one. It's a great start for Albon and Jackson. They get away one, two. In the background, I'm sliding there. There was contact with Norris. We'll get a look at that here uh, momentarily. But everybody else, uh, including myself, is still going to get off really well. No major contact, no collisions. Everybody's in good shape here and in good standing. It looks like my teammate of Verstappen had a terrible start. He's not even, I don't think, at the top ten. As I'm going to shoot one around the outside. 
side of Norris again. We continue wheel to wheel with the Brit now as we head towards the S's section here. Very difficult to go side by side through here in China, but you can see Norris going to hang on. He's on those soft tires. Of course, he's going to have more pace, more grip, and that Mercedes is just downright quicker right now at this point in the race now. As you can see, I just briefly saw Verstappen. Yeah, he has definitely dropped some uh, positions right there, so not where he needs to be, but everybody getting sorted out now. We'll take a look uh, at what happened on the start between myself and Norris, and this is it right here. Actually, before showing that, sorry, here comes Sonoda in the Aston Martin with just downright more straight line speed than myself. He's just going to dominate me here, and he's going to move into P6, really struggling uh, on this opening lap for just downright speed. Now we'll get a look at the start. So when I was going into turn one, watch this right here, kind of forcing it up the inside, contact right there with Norris, we save it, but then hold on, more contact right there, we would get a warning for a collision uh, on that one now, as we would continue on uh, towards now lap number three, with the DRS enabled, uh, a whole lap later, and you can see still running P7, but look at this, Sonoda's run down P, Ashby and Norris, and here I go, I'm going to catch uh, Sonoda, our former teammate off guard, of course, Yuki was our teammate back in our rookie season with Alpha Tori, and last season with Aston Martin. I don't think this battle is over. However, Sonoda fighting back up the inside. It is pretty clear that Aston Martin have brought more pace here today, but the trend for them has been the opposite of the Red Bull Ford. We start off slow, get quicker as the race goes. Aston starts out quick, and they get a little bit slower as the race goes. And now, as you can see, Norris pulling away as soon as he was able to get past the two Aston Martins there. He's on the soft tire as well. So we saw in the formation lap, the McLaren and Mercedes have split their two drivers, one on softs, one on mediums. Here we go, now passing Piastri. That Aston Martin on just lap four is already starting to fade. And they're going to go backwards probably uh, to the Ferraris. And then hopefully uh, Verstappen can run them down, pass them as well. But we'll have to wait and see how this kind of shakes out now. Uh, but now, it's, what can we do? Can we close in on the cars in front? We know that the pace is going to start coming to us and as we come to lap 6, now we're kind of hitting that point. It doesn't take a long time uh, for the kind of the car to start swinging in our favor to say the least and as we come through to lap 7 you can see the gap is definitely closing to Lando Norris so already that short run pace advantage that the other cars in front of us have are fading away the problem is of course you know when we come into the pits that's going to bring in another short run for the next set of tires so it's basically you get the two short runs you get the two long runs of a Grand Prix depending on uh, of course the variables uh, with strategy weather and, and safety cars etc all the different things that can change strategy but right now we are I would say balling out here I mean we are closing in tremendously on the back of Lando Norris look at the gap come down we had the little uh, scrap with him in turn one uh, as we look a little bit further down the order here on lap 10 Verstappen currently up to P9 he's in front of Charles Leclerc uh, who's having a bit of a rough day here Ferrari haven't quite seemed to be able to make the gains that we've seen Aston Martin bring into this weekend yet so I was expecting Ferrari to be the one getting ahead uh, but Aston Martin doing a great job early in this season here which is kind of disappointing because we left them to go to Red Bull Ford and here they are nearly as strong as us so far uh, but I still think we've made the right call but now lap 11 you can see right to the back of Norris we're going to try and catch him off guard lunge around the outside if possible he's going to plant himself smack dab in the middle of the road he's going to leave the door open right here though into the corner we're going to slip up the inside side by side with Norris and as you can see the gap to Russell is also closing telling us that we just got a lot of speed tail chair out of the session with a mechanical failure now as we're going to lunge one up the inside of Norris too deep into the corner he's going to do the switch back this battle continues the second scrap we've had today with Norris now as we head down towards the S's who's going to come out on top of this battle first it was Norris the first time this time it'll be us on the battle number two into the position of fourth can we close in now on Russell before the pit cycle very unlikely but we're going to get as close as we can and you can see as well, uh, now as we continue to the back straightaway, the battle is not over. Yeah, Norris is going to fight right back here with that DRS assistance. Although we have more pace, if he's, you know, within that one second threshold, it is so difficult uh, to stay ahead. And he is going to be able to do exactly that. But then on the very next straightaway, here we go. The fight back to Lando. Round three, really round three and a half because he just got banged past us now. It is not over with Norris into turn one. Contact there with the British driver now as we continue around the outside. This battle is starting to get a little bit feisty to say the least. But we get the job done. Yeah, if he wants to bring it on, I mean, game on, dude. 
you hear my side. We will, uh, we'll hear Lando's side here momentarily, I think, now as we come through the S's. Now the McLarens out in front of Albon and Jackson. Now, uh, as we head towards the double left-hander and Russell's right there on the road. He spun around. Oh my goodness, I had no warning. Uh, right there, and it's getting way worse as the Piastri car, uh, Oscar Piastri piles in as well as the Ferrari gets damaged. The safety car is out. It might go even further than a safety car. Yes, it does. A red flag due to the pileup. Oh my goodness, I did not see this one coming. Red flag in the Chinese Grand Prix. And wow, Norris spun it around. And obviously a stoppage in the action there uh, as we get ready to, of course, change the strategy up when, well, not really. We're going to be starting on the hards. But we had a little, uh, you know, mid-red flag chat with the team as well uh, as there was some chat with Lando Norris. Christian, what the f*** is your new guy doing out there? Looks like good racing out there to me, mate. He tried to take out Lando clear as day. If you want to race like that, we'll give it right back. I got no problem. Yeah, well, it sounds like you do. All right, Gary, be ready on the start here. The guys at Mercedes aren't happy how you raced Lando. You're joking, right? That, that was just racing, dude. I know. Get after it here. So, you hear the talk there uh, between... Christian Horner as well as Toto Wolf, and then you hear the talk between, uh, you know, Christian just relaying the info to me. So it's about to get interesting. Uh, we're going to be on the hard series, getting ready for the restart here on this hard compound tire while Jackson Norris on mediums. Let's see how this goes. Lights out. We're back racing here in China. It's a terrible start for Albon. Jackson through myself and Norris side by side in a turn when we close his entrance off. More contact with Norris there. He focuses on, of course, opening up the wheel there. Goes a little bit wide. I get another collision so the stewards thinking uh, that I'm a little bit more to blame for that one but Norris uh, is going to settle in the third behind us Jackson to the lead looking for that first win Albon down to fourth and you can see he's in defense mode uh, against uh, the teammate of mine of Max Verstappen in the background as well Carlos Sainz trying to move his way forward I'm not sure who was the Ferrari that drove into the back of uh, the cars in front of the Aston Martins and that red flag I'm going to assume it was Charles Leclerc but I'm not 100% sure but they should have been able to get a wing replacement, of course, during uh, the red flag. So just under a second to Jackson, but we know we're now on a short run. Jackson on a softer, fresher, or not fresher, but softer compound attire that is just as fresh as our hard. So it's going to be difficult here uh, to be able to run him down. And, and you're seeing that already. And in the background, uh, there's some battles happening. You got Verstappen and Albon going at it. Albon was able to pass Verstappen back after that red flag restart. So now it's game on. What can he do? He's going to be a good opportunity to kind of, you know, give us a judgment of where we are I would say but the battle I think is about to be on Lando Norris is starting to close in a little bit here on us Jackson was gone three seconds down the road I quite simply had nothing for him it was quite frustrating at this point you know the pace just not enough on the short run so you can see four tenths of a second here comes Norris lap 18 down the DRS straight I got nothing uh, once I realized I'm not going to be able to fight him off uh, I decided to just not deploy the battery anymore he kind of parks the bus right there on the apex makes it a little bit difficult for me but the battle is not over I haven't forgotten about of course what happened in the uh, earlier portions of the race in the chat between Christian uh, and Toto Wolf so we continue to battle with Norris we're going to slide up in front of him we'll take the uh, second position right back from Lando here. Albon is absolutely loving what he sees because he's trying to join the party, of course, and get into uh, the mix now as we're going to go through the grid on lap 20. Lots of drama here today in Shanghai as Aiden Jackson is on course for his first win. Problems, guys. Big problems. The Ferrari of Leclerc is retiring from the race. Some kind of mechanical failure for him. Unfortunate for him. He's got to be getting tired of this Ferrari disaster by now, you would think. I'm sure he can't be happy. Speaking of not happy, Here's a listen on uh, Lando Norris radio from an earlier battle with Owen. What the f is he doing, man? Trying to take us both out. What an idiot. Yeah, Lando uh, not exactly happy with Owen right now, and I don't think they are done fighting just yet. How about Iwasa on track right now to score points? A great drive from him here in China. Just behind his Ocon then, Drugovic in 11th place. Devon Butler up to 12th as well. He was really able to capitalise on the red flag restart. I have to wonder what, what has gone on with Joe today. No pace here in his home Grand Prix. Any news on him, Ted? I've got nothing, guys. Sounds like everything is working as intended. Joe just doesn't seem to have the pace he needs today. His teammate of Jake Hughes right now in 14th 
He may have been a shock to join the grid this year, uh, but he has done a solid job so far. Um, and you see him there about a second ahead of Callie Mayer, who was right there with her brother and teammate before the restart. Uh, and now she's under pressure from Joe down this long straightaway, of course, into, into a very heavy braking zone, one of the best passing options on the whole calendar. And there you have, through the grid, Joe battling right there with Mayer, of course, Leclerc with the mechanical failure. Uh, very, uh, very unfortunate for Charles now as we continue to try and focus on these battles. So during the, through the grid, actually, uh, I got passed right here by Lando Norris and I actually stayed put in behind him for a little bit because we were wasting time allowing Jackson to drive away and it was getting pretty frustrating of course neither of us really giving up on this battle here so I just decided to be a little bit patient and, and wait and see how things play out and you can see I mean we're still putting pressure on him but now Albon he's only four tenths of a second back he wasn't closing in on us but now he's here so I said all right it, it's game on we gotta go so we're gonna dive around the outside of Norris again earlier we tried to make a pass in this corner didn't quite work out this time job well done we get through we'll take the position back into runner-up here second place in these closing laps but the gap to Jackson over five seconds I mean quite simply put we're, we're not gonna get there in, unless he spins out like Russell also didn't has a DNF or if he has a mechanical issue or of course a full-blown mechanical failure like we saw uh, with Charles Leclerc and now as we close in towards the end of the long DRS straight you can see Albon was actually passing Norris for that third position so the question is what is Albon going to be able to do the answer was a bit surprising. He was falling backwards. He couldn't close in on me. He was nearly two seconds behind as we come to lap 24 to lap 26. Now two seconds behind me, but the gap to Jackson had not changed. So showing again, the long run pace in this Red Bull Ford is better than any other team on the grid, which is, I mean, massively boosting for the confidence here. It's just we got to figure out the short run pace. Unfortunately, obviously, we're not going to, you know, be able to win this Grand Prix but I'm really satisfied, you know, with the improvements of this Red Bull Ford uh, here in China, leading into, of course, Zanvoort in the next episode. But I really banked it down on the final lap here, so you're going to see the gap just increase tremendously here to Aiden Jackson and, and Albon as well. He's going to be able to close in on myself. But Aiden Jackson, I mean, we built this guy up from last season when he came to Connor Sport with that brand new team, uh, and he showed a lot of potential early on. Uh, and he, of course, got the call up to McLaren from Zach Brown. And now, I mean, here we are through these final moments. Aiden Jackson with McLaren is about to become a Formula One winner here in the Chinese Grand Prix. Yes, let's go, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Awesome drive out there, Aiden. Congratulations. You hear the emotion there? We're going to come through for our best result of the season, P2. And the game's weird. When you have a red flag, it just, like, cuts the end scene immediately to the cutscene of the post-race celebration. We don't care. We got a new, a new winner in Formula 1 uh, with Aiden Jackson. Absolutely awesome uh, to see, you know, this little idea I came up with in my head to bring Aiden Jackson, Devin Butler to the career mode, uh, and Connor Sport turn into, you know, Aiden Jackson getting an opportunity with a top team and, and now becoming, you know, a Formula 1 winner. It's it's really cool to see that kind of come full circle now and, and work itself out. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this as well. Uh, I feel like so far, honestly, this might be one of my favorite moments of the F123 drive career mode that we have had uh, just because of how it's all played out but I mean aside from that we also need to be, need to be beating this guy Aiden Jackson if we want to win a Formula One you know world title come the end of the season four I would really like to win it this season but it's going to be difficult you know I think we've very much well proven now we can beat Mercedes but McLaren we got to find a way quick uh, to beat them. It's going to be difficult. We we have shown the long run pace. We can beat the McLaren. That's the thing. We were equal on pace with them, uh, holding our own. So we just got to find a way to get ahead on the short run. If we can do that, we are going to have a heck of a season. You see the standings. P6, 55 points back. We make some good gains, but obviously some work to be done uh, in these coming episodes. In the next episode, we head to Zandvoort, home Grand Prix for Max Verstappen. Can he get his first podium of the season? Finally, the defending champion for Four time champ now looking to get back on the podium. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.